Have you ever been to a place where you catch yourself saying, I can't wait to go back here, when you haven't even left yet? Well, Adrian and I caught ourselves saying that when we were in Budapest. We came to Budapest thinking it would be just another destination to tick off our list. But we were wrong. The days we spent in this amazing city left us wanting more. Find out why you should visit Budapest. And by the way, we have a lot more destinations coming up. Subscribe now to get notifications of our upcoming videos. Before heading to Budapest, Adrian and I were really intrigued by the city. We had heard from many friends that this is a place that we will fall in love with and we couldn't wait to find out why. From San Francisco, we flew to London and then to Budapest after an overnight stop. So we are in Budapest. We just got here today and it's exciting. It's pretty cold. but. Not freezing. So, anyway, well, I'll take this over. Budapest, the capital of Hungary, is a captivating city that seamlessly blends history, culture, and natural beauty. The city is renowned for its stunning architecture, delicious cuisine, charming streets, lively markets, unique attractions, and a vibrant nightlife scene. Known as a Pearl of the Danube, Budapest is divided by the majestic Danube River, with a hilly Buda on one side and the vibrant Pest on the other. Budapest is also a very historic city with memorials everywhere, such as the shoes on the Danube bank, to honor the Jews who were massacred by the Arrow Cross party during the Second World War. They were told to take off their shoes and were shot at the edge of the water so that their bodies fell into the river and were carried away. Another is a ghetto wall memorial in the Jewish quarter. A map carved into the concrete shows the outline of the ghetto and has small round openings reminiscent of bullet holes. Looking through these will allow viewers to see historical scenes from the Jewish ghetto that once stood here. The House of Terror is a museum on Andresi Avenue. It contains exhibits related to the fascist and communist regimes in 20th century Hungary. It is also a memorial to the victims of these regimes, including those detained, interrogated, tortured, or killed in the building. The building was previously used by the Arrow Cross Party and Hungary's version of the KGB, which is the AVH. Part of the exhibition takes visitors to the basement where examples of cells used by the AVH to torture prisoners can be seen. For more information, visit their website. However, tickets cannot be pre-booked and can only be bought at the museum during the day of your visit. The next important historic location is Liberty Square. It was first erected in 1947 to commemorate the Soviet liberation of Hungary during World War II, which ended Nazi Germany's occupation. I was surprised to see several statues of notable Americans here. These were apparently erected by the Hungarians as a tribute to these individuals' contributions in their fight for freedom. A visit to the Hungarian parliament is a must-do when visiting Budapest. It is a testament to the architectural phenomenon all over the city. It is a very popular destination, so I suggest booking your tickets as early as possible. Once inside this majestic building, you will be stunned by the breathtaking and intricate details in every corner of the parliament.
one of the things we enjoyed the most was strolling between Buddha and Pest via the Sicheni Chain Bridge. It's an impressive bridge that gave us stunning views of the city, especially at night. The bridge was commissioned to allow boats to cross the river during the coldest months. It also made Buddha and Pest easily connected. The chain bridge took 20 years to build and was inaugurated on November 20, 1849, even before Budapest became a single city. Elizabeth Square is one of the most beautiful squares in the historical city of Budapest in the Lipotvaros district. Here you will find the Budapest Ferris wheel and plenty of greenery. Like many cities, it has a lovelocks fence adorned with padlocks from lovers and friends all over the world. At the square, the iconic Danubius fountain can also be found. Budapest is also a destination for shopping and enjoying fantastic food. There are many places in the city such as Fashion Street where there are mostly well-known and high-end shops. I loved walking through Fashion Street during our December visit because of the amazing light displays. It was so festive. Zini Street by the Basilica is adorned with lots of amazing cafes and restaurants. The same goes for the vibrant Vora Smarty Square, where you will be spoiled for choices. And lastly, Vatsi Utsa, the main pedestrian thoroughfare primarily for tourists. But the square that took my breath away was the world-famous St. Stephen's Basilica Square. We were so lucky to have visited during Christmas and this video doesn't fully show how stunning it was. Even without the Christmas market, it is a popular tourist destination and is a great way to preempt a visit to the Basilica, which was named after Hungary's first king. However, it was cold though. I look like Rudolph, look how red my nose <laughs> For a small entrance fee, no trip to Budapest will be complete without visiting the St. Stephen's Basilica. After many challenging years, the basilica was finally completed in 1905. It suffered serious damage during World War II, but its cellar served as a shelter for many refugees. It is famous for its beauty, but it also houses a very important yet intriguing relic, the mummified right hand of Hungary's first king, St. Stephen. Legend says that for some reason, his hand stayed intact despite his entire body decomposing. And by the way, do not forget to climb the Tower of the Basilica. It is tiring, but the 360-degree views at the tower are definitely stunning and will make your climb worth it. I love listening to church bells. Anyway, what an amazing experience we had enjoying a beverage with golden views of the parliament building. For the best views of Budapest, head to Fisherman's Bastion. This was hands down my favorite part of Budapest. Not only for the panoramic views, but for the countless historic buildings everywhere. The original walls were built in the 1700s as part of a castle. Several historians say that in the Middle Ages, this part of the castle was protected by the Guild of Fishermen, who lived under the walls, hence the name. One thing to note though, that it was very busy at night. So we decided to return the next day very early in the morning, and we got to enjoy the views with little to no disruption. restaurants, cafes, and bars here. In addition to this, there is also a small yet fascinating souvenir shop underground. In front of the bastion, within the Holy Trinity Square, is the intricately beautiful Matthias Church. I highly recommend paying a visit just to see the amazing designs and handiwork that make this Catholic church very unique. According to church tradition, 
It was originally built in Romanesque style in 1015. However, as the years passed, it evolved into a Gothic style church. The church also has a tower that you can tour and climb, but don't do it if you are claustrophobic. The stairwell is very narrow, but do it if it doesn't bother you. On the way to Buddha Castle, we spotted the House of Houdini, a private exhibit and performance venue featuring a magic show and a plethora of the famous Hungarian-American escape artist's artifacts. This also includes a very claustrophobic vault that I could not get out of. I don't even know why I put myself in there in the first place. Adrian enjoyed watching me try for a very long time to get out. Buda Castle is a historical castle and palace complex of the Hungarian kings. It was first completed in 1265, although the enormous Baroque palace today was built between 1749 and 1769. The castle now houses the Hungarian National Gallery and the Budapest Historical Museum. The castle sits on the southern tip of Castle Hill, surrounded by the touristic area known as Castle Quarter, which is famous for its medieval, baroque, and neoclassical houses, churches, public buildings, and monuments. The hill is linked to Clark Adams Square and the Szczeny Chain Bridge by the Castle Hill funicular. The castle is a part of the Budapest World Heritage Site. The original palace was ruined during World War II, but it was rebuilt between 1956 and 1965. The gardens, the main courtyard, and the surroundings of the Buda Castle are free. However, the three wings of the main building require an entrance fee for you to visit them. As mentioned earlier, the Clark Adams Square is connected to Castle Hill by the funicular. It cost us $12 a person one way, and the ride, although pretty, was very short. It has been a link between the Danube, Riverbank, and the castle since 1870. It runs on a 95-meter long track on a gradient of 31.2 degrees and provides captivating views of the city below. We heard that the bars in Budapest are something we shouldn't miss, so we headed to a well-known speakeasy called Hotsi Totsi in the Jewish Quarter. We were given a stack of cards instead of a menu to choose our drinks from, and every single drink we had did not disappoint. It's like a cupcake. It does look like a cupcake. I forgot what both of these drinks were called, but obviously they were so good. Located in the 7th district, the Jewish district is home to plenty of historic landmarks and many of Budapest's famous ruin bars, eclectic boutiques, avant-garde galleries, and great places to eat, including the Caravan Street Food Park. At Caravan, there are a few food trucks and food stalls that offer many dishes for everyone to try, from goulash to vegan treats. Budapest is also famous for ruin bars. Unfortunately, my camera malfunctioned when we visited Simple Kurt, the most famous one. Ruin bars are unique and fun, so make sure to visit one. Great Market Hall, or Central Market Hall, is the largest and oldest indoor market in Budapest. Located on Vatsi Utsa, this market sells everything from fresh produce, to coffee, local delicacies, yummy baked goods, and ready-made dishes that are absolutely delicious. If you are a serious foodie, this is the best place for you to visit. Note that it does get busy and very crowded. During our visit, it was a must to try Hungarian cuisine. Some of my favorites were the stuffed cabbage, which is a generous helping of meat wrapped in cabbage leaves and soaked in a tomato-based sauce. Langos, a deep-fried dough that is flat and topped with a variety of toppings. I called it a crispy pizza. 
There are many toppings to choose from, but the most common ones are cheese, sour cream, sausage, and garlic oil sauce. Oh my god. It's like crispy pizza. It's delicious. And one that you shouldn't miss, a chimney cake. Chimney cakes are made from a sweet yeast dough that is rolled into a long rope and baked in the open around a cylinder. They are then coated with sugar and can be filled with Nutella. The best chimney cake is a hot chimney cake. Adrian loved his so much he didn't even notice that he had Nutella on his nose. Adrian and I enjoyed sipping a steaming cup of hot Hungarian chocolate, especially since it was cold when we were there. Hungarian hot chocolate is very thick and rich and is full of flavor. Topped with sweet whipped cream, it was definitely a treat that we enjoyed on several days. And lastly, although not a Hungarian staple, we thought we'd include this hilarious bakery, Mr. Dick Sexy Bakery that sells genitalia-shaped waffles. The waffles were actually good, but the entire experience definitely gave us a good laugh. Have you ever been to a cafe that is so elegant and ornate it feels like you're having tea or coffee in a palace? Well, if you haven't, then head to the New York Cafe. Lots of people flock to this restaurant for the picture-perfect setting and the ambiance. I particularly enjoyed watching the talented musicians play. latte topped with gold dust, and surprisingly, it was good. Although, I wasn't so sure if the gold dust did anything special at all, to be honest. Adrian, on the other hand, had a 24 karat gold hot chocolate that came with a little treat. Smallest cookie in the world. What did you think that was? Small cookie. <laughs> That's why I thought it was sugar. <laughs> Adrian and I had dinner as well, and I had the mushroom pasta while he had a plate of Wiener Schnitzel. And we both had a lemon tart for dessert. The food was delicious, but not mind-blowing. I guess coming here was more for the experience. Be warm though, this place is extremely popular and lines are always long. Rain, sleet, snow or shine, day or night. I highly recommend making a reservation. The New York Cafe takes reservations from 6pm onwards and it's best to book on their website. Good morning from Budapest. It's a snowy but beautiful morning here and I absolutely love winter. It's my favorite time of the year. I know people may think I'm crazy but I love snow. There's something magical about snow. It just makes everything look so beautiful and it just makes winter more real. We are in um, Hero Square uh, first thing in the morning so after this we are heading to 
the Great Market Hall, and then we will head off to the Shizenmi Bats. Our trip here in Budapest has been a lot of fun. There's been so much to do, but what I really love about Budapest is how historic it is and how authentic everything seems to be. You know, they basically retain their identity, which I absolutely adore, for, especially for history buffs like me. This is actually absolutely spectacular. Hero Square is one of the major squares in Budapest with its iconic Millennium Monument with statues featuring the seven chieftains of the Magyars and other important Hungarian national leaders, as well as a memorial stone of heroes. The square lies at the outbound end of the Andrasi Avenue next to City Park. On a perfect winter day like today, it was a great place to enjoy the snow. At City Park, you will find the enormous outdoor ice skating rink that was opened in 1870. It is one of the largest and oldest skating parks in Europe. Vadya Hunyad Castle is one of the romantic castles in Budapest, located in City Park by the skating rink. The castle was built in 1896 and is a copy of the Hunyad or Corvin Castle in Romania. The castle is a home of several festivals, concerts, and the exhibitions of the Hungarian Agricultural Museum. Here is an interesting fact. Originally, the castle was made from cardboard and wood, but it became so popular that it was rebuilt from stone and brick between 1904 and 1908. A statue of Anonymous and Babar in his namesake can also be found in the castle court. Remember when I told you that we love winter and snow? We loved it so much it gave Adrian a chance to skip and pretend that he was a model. It was a perfect winter stroll through the gardens as we made our way to the thermal baths. You've probably heard that Budapest is a haven for thermal baths. And on this trip, we decided to try the Sechenyi Medicinal Thermal Bath in City Park. The Sechenyi Medicinal Bath in Budapest is the largest medicinal bath in Europe. The water's temperature is between 74 degrees Celsius and 77 degrees Celsius and is supplied by two thermal springs. The water is also said to be very rich in minerals like sulfate, calcium, and magnesium. The Sechenyi has a 50-meter outdoor pool for lane swimming and two thermal baths, one on each end of the pool. It is recommended to stay in the bath for at least 20 minutes before lounging on a recliner or taking a cold shower to revive your circulation. Personally, I enjoyed the warm water, especially on a snowy day. Ignoring the large amount of people around me, I just stayed put and relaxed. When buying a day ticket, you can come and go on the day as you please. But since this is a popular destination, I came early. Once you get there, you will need to register and get your access wash that you need on your wrist during your entire stay. You can also rent towels and robes here. I booked way in advance and chose to have my own changing room, which I can lock and store personal items in. Once I got upstairs, I activated my watch using one of these machines on the wall. Remember, if you do not activate this, you will not get access to your changing room. Once activated, I gained access to my room, which was very small and disappointingly pitch dark. After leaving Sechenyi, Adrian and I walked over to a nearby cafe and warmed ourselves up in one of their glass domes with, yep, you guessed it, hot chocolate. We just couldn't get enough of it. And plus, it was so comfortable and warm sitting in that glass dome. Getting around Budapest is very easy. You can easily find taxis or book a ride share using Bolt or Uber. 
I was very surprised to see how much more affordable it was to take a taxi or a rideshare here than it is in the United States. The city is also abundant with streetcars and trams that you can virtually take anywhere. Or even rent a bike. But Adrian and I like to explore on foot and we found the city to be very walkable. I think what's most important to know is that Budapest is very affordable compared to other European cities. So it's definitely a great place for you to visit without breaking the bank. Credit cards and other electric forms of payment, like Apple Pay, are widely accepted here. However, it is always good to keep a small amount of cash, which are Hungarian forints. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for our upcoming videos. We have so many more destinations and trips to share. Stay curious and explore. Thank you for watching and we can't wait to see you again soon.